After maxing a level 3 skiller at the very end of 2023, I've decided to dive into uncharted territory by making my first ever true main account. I did have a main account in the past, but the farthest I've progressed was the Dragon Slayer and Monkey Madness quests. I've never gotten a fire cape, never did barrows, definitely didn't do any GWD, and I haven't even done desert treasure before. So forget what you know about my past accounts and that I haven't even touched a combat set since 2014, and join me while I play OSRS in its intended fashion for the very first time ever. This is maxing a main. Well, 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 what do we have here? Welcome everybody to the very first episode of Maxing a Main. In this series, I'm making a brand new main account from scratch with absolutely no trades or starter cash from any of my other accounts with the ultimate end goal of maxing this account. I actually pulled this series in a YouTube pool quite a while ago where I asked you guys if you would like this series and if so, whether or not I should make a regular account or an Iron Man account. Believe it or not, their regular account actually went out and that's low key kind of what I was hoping for because since this is gonna be my main account, when a new update comes out, whether it be a new item, new weapon, new area, or even like a new raid in the future, I'm not gonna be limited with an Iron Man account, which means that I'm gonna be able to make content on those updates and also having a main account will allow me to make videos such as grand exchange flipping videos if I ever want to or any other money making guides. There's a whole lot of things I can make on a regular account that wouldn't be possible on an Iron Man account. So what's going on right now is I am completing Tutorial Island. I thought it would be a good idea to actually max all of my stats that I can on Tutorial Island simply because it's a lot faster to do on Tutorial Island than it is in the real game. On Tutorial Island, you get capped at level 3, so I'm going to be getting level 3 in all of my possible stats, except for prayer because I'm not going to be camping around worlds for literally hours hoping to pick up random people completing Tutorial Island's bones from killing the rats. So I'm not worried about prayer, but everything else is going to get to level 3 because doing it on Tutorial Island is so much faster. And smithing is done here. Now here comes the actual challenge here about maxing on Satorial Island. They made it so that you can't camp on the rats. If you kill a rat, you have to leave the pen. You can't attack anymore. But they did make it so that you never miss a hit on these rats. You're guaranteed to hit a one every single time. So my plan with this is to hit the rats two times and then switch rats because they body block each other. I'm able to do two damage on each rat. And then once I hit all of these rats, I'm able to leave the cage without killing one, hop worlds, go back in, and then do it again and again and again. So it is faster than training training on anything else at this level bracket simply because you never hit zeros and they make it so that you can't die on tutorial island so there's no chance of death you don't have to worry about food or anything like that okay so it's been about six or seven minutes we finally hit level three defense so let's kill this rat and get out of here to get our range stuff Something that's pretty cool about this as well is we're level 5 combat right now and we're 20% of the way to level 6. So that's a nice pretty quick head start. But uh, yeah, let's grab this range stuff and let's do the same exact thing. It's going to be way easier because I don't get hit by the rats anyway. So I could just click on them. This should only take probably 40 seconds. And level 3 range. Very, very nice. Now let's head over to do our magic stuff. I'm not sure how many of you know this because common knowledge makes it seem like you could only do one cast on these chickens to do magic training. However, that's not the case. So let me grab a bunch of runes real quick and I'll show you guys the method that you could use on Tutorial Island to get a free level three magic right out of the gate. So once you have your runes, this is what you're going to want to do. Cast the spell on the chicken. It's not going to let you do it anymore. So you're stuck at level one. However, before you talk to the wizard, you could actually run all the way back to the rats and you could freely cast magic spells on these rats. Just make sure you have enough runes. I got 35 air runes, 35 mine runes, and that seemed to be enough. You might need to get maybe 40 or 50, depending on your RNG, if you hit twos or not. So yeah, make sure you have enough runes before you attack the chicken, because you're not going to be able to get more if you don't do that before attacking the chicken. So we're going to do exactly like we did with the range training, and let's get level three magic. Alrighty, level three magic, baby. Aside from prayer, we completely maxed out on Tutorial Island, and it's finally time to start this account for real in Lumbridge. Okay, we are now officially starting the series. First time this account has ever been in Lumbridge, let's take it in. And the very first person we see before starting our adventure is Firebench Cat, or is it Firebench California Tea? I do not know. He is level 46. Good luck on your journey, my brother, and hopefully we see you again. Now that we're finally in Lumbridge, let me tell you guys the rules that we are going to follow with this series. 
Rule number one, no transferring wealth or items from other accounts until I am maxed. Because once I'm maxed, it's not a big deal if I want to transfer some stuff over for some content or whatever, but there's no transferring until I'm maxed. Rule number two, I am stuck in free to play until I complete every free to play quest and can afford a bond. Money making and free to play can be acquired by any means, whether that be skilling, looting in PVP, or even drop parties. The only thing I'm not allowed to do is accept donations for a bond. Everything else though is fair game. Rule number three, once I afford and purchase my first bond at Escape Free to Play, from then on, I'm allowed to buy membership. I don't want to waste hours and hours and hours of money making in members worlds to maintain a bond. It's not very good content for you guys anyway. And in the future, if I ever do end up taking a two week break for something, I don't want to come back to my account standing in free to play and having to make money all over again. That would be insanely boring for you guys. So once I'm able to buy my first bond, I'm allowed to purchase membership from then on out. Rule number four, there is going to be no purchasing bonds with real life money unless I want to do it for a name change. And there's an extremely low chance of that ever happening anyway, because I have the perfect username that I want for this account. But more importantly, I can't buy a bond to sell it for gold. Rule number five, I will not accept any monetary donations, which are GP or items, but I will accept feathers, which leads me to rule number six. If you do decide to donate feathers to me, I am not allowed to sell them ever. I just like the way a big feather stack looks and I thought that if you wanted to donate something, you could add to the feather stack. I'm going to be screenshotting every single one of the donations and throwing them at the end of whatever video that I'm making at the time. I just thought it would be something fun to do with the community. And since I'm not taking direct donations, it would be really cool to see how high this feather stack can go. And the last rule, rule number seven, is the Fashionscape plugin is allowed, but only if I have the items in the bank or unlocked. So I can't be level five running around Lumbridge looking like I have an Elijah Spirit Shield or anything crazy like that. And the reason I love the Fashionscape plugin, it might be one of my favorite plugins, is I just hate looking at Graceful 24 seven when skilling. Graceful is so powerful that you're basically forced to wear it. And if not, you're being inefficient and basically nerfing yourself. So the Fashionscape plugin is allowed. And if you guys don't know what the Fashionscape plugin is, let me give you a quick rundown. What it does is allow your character to wear any item in the game, whether you have the stats for it, quest for it or not. But the only person who could see these items is you. So if you're wearing a full set of rune and you want to make it look like to yourself that you're wearing a full set of Torva, you can do that. And as I said, it's completely cosmetic. No other players see what you see. They would still see your rune armor. And the reason I love this plugin so much is because I have really, really bad ADHD. And being able to change the way my character looks all the time is super beneficial to me. Because looking at the same outfit constantly kind of makes me feel a little bit burnt out. And being able to completely change my look at any given moment really helps me reset my brain. So if you guys are experiencing burnout, maybe you should try the Fashionscape plugin. I know it might seem silly, but it does work. But anyway, let me give you guys a quick recap of all of the rules real quick. There's going to be no transferring items or GP. We're going to be stuck in free to play until I complete every quest and can buy a bond. Once I do buy that bond, I can then purchase membership in the future. I'm not allowed to buy bonds with real life money. I'm not taking any donations besides feathers. I can't sell those feathers ever. It's just going to be a forever growing stack. And the Fashionscape plugin is allowed. So now that the rules are all out of the way, let's start our very first free to play quest. And as you guys probably could have guessed, it is the cook's assistant. Alright, we just finished our very first quest on this account, and completing this quest got us 1 quest point and 300 cooking XP, which brings us up to level 5 cooking. We can now cook herring. I'm not too sure what I want to do next. 
I am really looking forward to training some combat since I haven't done it in so, so long. And I was just watching an episode of Gilinor Games where they use the punching bag in Varrock in order to get some quick attack levels. And I think that's what we're going to go do now. First things first, let's throw this stuff in the bank. I completely forgot it was even in our inventory. And there we go. We now have a total bank worth of 1.2 thousand GP, which is insane to see, honestly. But let me take out these air and mind runes real quick because on the way to Varrock, we are going to stop at the mage trainer and we're going to grab 30 of each rune. I wasn't sure if I wanted to grab the training bow and the arrows or not, but I think a regular short bow and bronze arrows are pretty cheap on their own. So probably the most beneficial to grab some air and mind runes. I definitely want to get some magic training out of the way as quickly as possible, simply because we are in free to play and I can't use any type of teleporting jewelry or teleport tabs. So we are going to need to get the magic level of at least 25 for Varrock, 31 for Lumbridge, and 37 for Falador. And in the future, I think I'm going to mage Elvarg, so we're going to need 35 magic anyway. But let's drop these air and mind runes, claim the 30 from the magic combat tutor, and I'm not sure when we're going to be able to afford to train magic. Hopefully I could find a draw party or something that I could do because in my free to play skiller series, draw parties were a crazy way to make money fast. As long as you have good reaction times and you have PID. So hopefully I could find one of those at some point. Now that I'm thinking about it, I should have used the teleport from Count Check to get to Barbarian Village. That would have been a lot nicer than running here and using all of my run energy. But it is what it is. I guess we could use that in the future. I definitely want to get the fancy boots because looking at my character with absolutely no items on is really repulsive. But anyway, here we are at the dummies. I'm not sure which stats you can train. I might be only attack. So each punch gives you five attack XP. Can you do strength? No, you can't. It only gives attack XP. So, uh, yeah, let's get to punching. Alright, as you guys can see, we have used up all of our attack XP. I'm not sure how much each one gives you, but we are now at level 8 attack. So we got 5 whole levels here punching these dummies, and our combat level is now 6.8. So glad I saw this in Soup's video. It honestly saved me probably a half hour worth of training on chickens or something. That is where I am going to be ending this video. I know I didn't have too much progress, but this video was pretty much just basically an intro to the new series I'm starting. But don't worry, there will be a lot more progress in the next one. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next one.